think maybe it was good because people wouldn't have said that. And you wouldn't have had happen what happened in May last year, right, if you remember. Uh, Ron Atkinson, the football manager, he got in trouble for calling a black footballer a lazy, thick nigger, right? And loads of people complained about it, understandably. And then on May the 17th, Jimmy Hill, the BBC-employed football commentator, came out in Ron Atkinson's defence and he said that, in his opinion, it was a load of fuss about nothing. He said, what you have to understand, Jimmy Hill said in the paper, 17th of May, is that in the culture of football, calling a black man a nigger is just a bit of harmless fun. <laughs> and I thought, call me old-fashioned. I, mean, <laughs> I know the culture of football has a very broad definition of harmless fun. <laughs> broad enough to include carrying out a racial assault and still getting in the England team, <laughs> uh, gang raping a teenage girl in a London hotel room, and yet perversely allowing Jimmy Hill to carry on living. But surely <laughs> that can't be the case. But Jimmy Hill went on to qualify his statement. He said that in his opinion, calling a black man a nigger was no more offensive than calling him, Jimmy Hill, chinny. <laughs> because he had a big chin. <laughs> and again, I read that and I thought, call me a square from the past. But surely the word nigger is more offensive than the word chinny. <laughs> because the word nigger comes with a whole weight of cultural and historical significance that it's not really there for the word chinny. <laughs> you know, there were not some... There are not people in this country standing for election now on the grounds that people with big chins should be sent back to wherever they came from. <laughs> Chin land, probably. I don't know. I haven't done any research into it, obviously. And there were not vast swathes of humanity historically enslaved on the grounds that they had big chins. <laughs> if there had been, all popular culture as we know it would be entirely different. There would not be a blues root underpinning all the late 20th century popular music that you love if the Mississippi Delta had been populated exclusively by disenfranchised ex-slaves with big chins. <laughs> Woke up this morning... Got a big chin. <laughs> it's not that much of a problem, to be honest. I won't base an entire musical genre on it. Now, you don't hear news reports saying a man was beaten to death in Hull last night. The violence is thought to have been chin motivated. <laughs> Although in Jimmy Hill's case, I'd be happy to see an exception made. <laughs> kill him! Kill Jimmy Hill! But kill him in an ironic way. Break in to the Natural History Museum, steal the jawbone of a blue whale, <laughs> the largest chin currently known to science, <laughs> and beat Jimmy Hill to death with it. In an example of what sociologists are already calling chin-on-chin -chin violence. <laughs> but we shouldn't...